So first off, as soon as I'm highlighted. I see you. There you go. Uh, this is not safety, but I want to thank Ron Radcliffe and Billy Dillard for nominating me to do 10 projects on Facebook. I don't <laughs> normally go on Facebook, but I haven't been in the shop due, due to health reasons for almost two months. So I will get there. And I accept the challenge, but I will get there. That Ron yeah. causes trouble all over the place, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. But, you know, Billy Diller does too. What can we say? <laughs> so that's just pictures. Just pictures. Uh, yeah, you don't have I know. to do a new project. I know that, but you, all y'all have seen my old projects. So, you know, I'd like to have some new, <laughs> some new projects. Uh, but anyways, uh, I got a message tonight from Dennis Morgan out of Saratoga, New York about dirty dust masks. Now, this past year, since I've come to these meetings, I've learned a lot. In fact, about a year ago, I asked, when do you know that the filters in your dust mask are dirty? And it was uh, uh, our, our, our Toronto friend that came back and said, if you can smell the wood, or the dust, you need to change your dust mask filters. You normally don't wash those filters unless you have a mask that can be washed. So I know that there's some masks out there that can be washed. Uh, one was designed by a woman in, in by a lady that's in women in turning. She uh, she mentioned it at the Florida Symposium. Yeah, those are great masks. I, I prefer filtered masks that I can change change out the filters. That mask that she did, I actually used when I was woodworking, but I'm in more dust now. So I use regular masks. But if 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 you're smelling wood or if you're if you if your mouth is a little gritty or your nose is crusty, it's time to change those masks because that's what's gonna help you from contracting COPD. Does anybody else have anything else to talk about on masks? But I'm let, still let, me ask, let me ask a question on the mask. If you just have a mask that filters particles, you're, you're going to smell through it. The smells are going to go through that. If it, all you have is a particle mask, you have to actually have charcoal filters, filtration to take the smell out. Well, I, I understand that like now with I had some particle masks and on the micro dust would go through it, but the bigger dust particles wouldn't. I personally always have a filter with charcoal in it because I'll do pyography every once in a while. So uh, I'm gonna say to everybody, get the, the best mask that you can afford. Don't go out and buy one that's, you know, 10 bucks, you, you need to buy the best mask that you can afford that will prevent you from having, having health issues as you get older. I could say something to that. I, the NIOSH approved N95 or N6, N95 or N100 will take out particulate down to 0.3 microns. 0.3 microns is smoke and bacteria, pollen, dust. Um, you never ever blow a filter out with an air hose. Okay, that's a common way of doing things. But a, a really good filter is not a, like a screen door where the stuff passes through. It's a it's a fiber that's electrostatically charged as the air goes through it and it will not take high volumes of anything in fact it ruins the filter media itself so if you blow your dust mask out or your your canister out it, it works great the next time but it's not doing the job either i've been involved with respirators for many years and uh, there goes on anything you can wash 
will work down to maybe three microns and three microns and above won't float in the air anyway. So you want the stuff that goes down to like 0 0.3 microns. And that's it. I guess. Right. I, uh, thanks, Jim. It's, uh, I lost your video, Sue. Yeah, no. I know. I'm having issues with the cord. How's that? Is that better? Thank oh, you. Oh, yes. Okay. Thanks, Jim. I, I appreciate it because, yeah, you know, all the ins and outs. My mask is a P100. And uh, I'm not sure what that means, but it's a P, P100. And uh, Kay just said you should get a mask that's $50 or mm -hmm. above. You want to get the best that you can afford. The ones that you wash, they're great if you're going to be using just the bad saw, but they're not okay for what we do for turning. You well, know? there's a couple more things. Um, first off, the mask has to fit your face, and manufacturers tell you how to do that. Plug the plug the intake and try to breathe through it and whatever. It has to fit your face, or the stuff's coming around the sides. There's three kinds of filters. There's N, R, and P. The, you have a P100, which is 100%, 99.97% efficiency. And N95 is 90, at least 95% efficient. Don't ask me where they get these, but an N mask, an N, uh, N100 is for particulates. An R, 100 is for pick particulates and oil fumes. I think it's up to eight hours exposure or something like that. P100 is good for particulate and oil fumes, uh, full-time oil fumes. The other thing is the canisters that will take out tresses, right? If you've got gases or anything like that, a canister, when you take it out of the package, is activated charcoal. And it's like opening a can of paint. It starts sucking up all the impurities. If you leave the can of paint out for a month and go to use it, it's not gonna work, okay? And it's the same with, it's the same with a charcoal filter. People have it on, they have this charcoal filter mask under their workbench for 12 years and they put it on and start spraying and think that it, it, it's protecting them and the charcoal is actually dead. It, 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 once you're done with the canister, put it back in the package and that helps to save it. But canisters is another whole world. I, I don't get into that. Okay. okay, good luck. It's your health, you know, it, and it takes 10 years. As you get older, you don't worry about 10 years, but uh, it, uh, it takes a long time before that stuff starts kicking in, but when it does, you wish you were to wear a mask. Well, we got some folks that have been doing it for nine years. They only have a year. So. You got it. <laughs> we want to make sure. One thing I want to add is uh, you wear a mask when you take it off. Don't leave it in your wood shop open. Always put it in like a freezer Ziploc bag. Otherwise, all that dust that's in the atmosphere and in the air is still settling inside, outside, and all around the areas of your mask. So when you put that mask back on, you're going to be absorbing all that dust. It is especially up under all these lips and inside the little flap that opens and closes to let the good air and the bad air, the good air in and the bad air out. So whenever you take the saw, put it in a freezer, a Ziploc bag, do that up tight before you leave the shop, and then it's going to always uh, stay clean on the inside. Another thing is, if you have a big beard, the straps don't get tight enough, so some particles will actually filter through the hair on your face. So you will be breathing some of those particles unless you are perfectly clean shaven. Thanks, Kate. Uh, also, Heather just mentioned that she uses a hospital grade mask, an N95, which is great. Some people use surgical masks. A surgical mask is not a dust mask. It's, no. a, 
it's a spatter shield. It, do, it doesn't fit your face. It goes across your face and it's made for somebody that's coughing or hacking or something. It, 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 stops the, it stops the impurities or the germs from getting to your nostrils and your mouth. It is not a respirator. A surgical mask is not a respirator of any kind. Even I find N95s, they don't totally seal around your mouth and your face. You want something with silicone or something that will mold your face with the tightness of the straps. Because even with an N95 mask or a COVID mask, even though it's rated to filter that amount of particles, if it's not tight up against your nose and you still have that little gap where your nostril flares out, dust is going to, going to come up and in that hole and you're still actually inhaling dust that you don't even know you're inhaling. So I would always recommend one that's silicone or neoprene or some sort of rubberish type that will mold and seal to the skin of your face. Like, like the one I'm wearing. <laughs> yeah, now I have two of those. One for... Uh my regular shop in the garage and one for my lady shop in the Florida room. So, uh, and, I, and I like them and I have a case for each one. And, uh, but Dennis, does that answer all your questions? And what, and I, was, had a what I was concerned about is everything that everybody said is correct, but the, has anybody, you washed the mask out the, the, the neoprene or the, the not, not the cloth, the M95 ones, but the ones that, that are like a fit your face, do you wash them out? Because you as you breathe in them, you get condensation in them for a long time. It's like an oxygen mask. If you don't wipe it out or wash it out, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff can grow in there that you're unaware of. So yeah, you, you, mold. You, that's what I'm concerned about is people washing them out, making sure you've got a clean environment that you're breathing in, that it's yeah, dust-free and oh. germ-free. Okay. That's a great point. Um, mold and bacteria will start to grow within that atmosphere. So I clean my mask one, every week, sometimes twice a week, because I mean, I turn Monday to Friday, nine to three. So I'm always cleaning my mask and change, changing the filters too. Right. That's and, important. Uh, let me add probably let me add probably the best the best system that I've seen out there is something like hobby air. It's the thing that the uh, paint the people that paint automobiles use. Yeah. And basically it is a small, it's a fan with a HEPA filter on it, and you put it somewhere else out of your shop. It's not inside your shop, it's outside of the shop, and it takes air from another play, another location pressurized air into you and, and into a mask. You're right. Yeah. In fact, if you do any kind of sandblasting, right. there, yeah. there's, there's no filtered mask will work for sandblasting. It, it, and, it just plain does not work. And the, the good air. part about this is positive pressure inside the mask. So yeah. it doesn't, you don't get the leakage from coming in from outside. Right. And it's yes. what they use because they're dealing with very hazardous chemicals uh, in the paint that they're spraying. Right. And it's probably the best system I've seen out there. Uh, they're not that expensive. And I actually plumbed it throughout my shop with a PVC pipe, put it in two or three locations. If I got too much pressure, I'll open the valve someplace else and let it leak <laughs> out a little bit. One, one thing about those washable masks, like, like this one here, we've all had them. A lot of people just take the filter out and change it, but you really need to take the valves out, take them apart, mm -hmm. wash the silicone discs, because if any dust has gotten in there with all your moisture that you're breathing, it will hold those flaps open and you're not filtering anything. That is correct, yeah. Chris. Very true. That's right. In fact, that, that is filthy. You, you have three valves in most of the N95 masks. Two valves are behind the filters and if those mm -hmm. leak when you're breathing out the, your breath goes in behind the filter which is no problem if the exhaust valve leaks you're sucking the impurities right in front of your face 
you, you've got to make sure that exhaust valve seals. And they tell you how to do that. You take the two filters off, hold your hands over the, your palm of your hands over the filters, put it on your face and suck in. And if you can feel any leakage around your face or around the exhaust valve, you got to pull it up tighter, yeah. fix it or something. That's that little valve. That's, that's all that's protecting you. That's right. And when that falls off that little stem, which you just did on this one, it's not helping at all. Right. They, they dry out and crack. So over time, you have to replace them. And how the hell do they put them back on? <laughs> <laughs> well, that one's behind the intake valve. It's behind the filter, isn't it? Uh, or is that an exhaust valve? It's an AR exhaust valves. Oh, they, yeah, that's got to work. No. They usually have a little plastic pin or a button or a little tiny screw. Yeah, I'm going to put them outside of it. Take yeah, them yeah, in and out. Push them over. Anyway, just yeah. thought I'd bring it up. I'm so glad you did because look at the discussion that we just went through. And I was going to say, very active, great discussion. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I learned a lot. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank you. And remember, guys, be safe this week. Breathe safely. Take care, you guys. Thank you, Thank Sue. You.